The Tivo Tarantula Duel was my first multi-material printer that I own so far. I got some really nice looking multicolor prints and dissolvable support structure models out of it and was quite shocked by some things, especially one horrible safety issue. Stick around for the review and an introduction to multi-nozzle 3D printing. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. Gearbest sent me this printer a couple of months ago for a review free of charge, but all the opinions I will express in this video are my own. The printer comes at a price of currently around $350 and is delivered as a kit which we assembled on a live stream a while back. It took us a good 5 hours to get it printing, so definitely way more work than other almost ready to print units. On first glance, the delivered manual looked very professional and was usable for the first two pages. Then often the images didn't match up with the text and everything got a little confusing. There are a couple of detailed assembly videos on YouTube you can use as a reference if you are stuck somewhere. Mine came with a big print bed that is advertised with a print volume of 200 by 280 by 200 mm but I was only able to somehow use 250 mm in the y direction. Also, you need to consider that the dual head will cost you around 20mm of print space in the X direction if you only print with one nozzle and almost 40mm when you use dual extrusion. The heated bed has a Biltec like printing surface applied to it on which the prints stick very well, actually even too good on some occasions. The frame is made from these lot aluminum extrusions on which also the rollers are running on. Unfortunately, they didn't use proper connectors, which makes the frame quite wobbly if you are not using additional reinforcement. I also spent quite some time to get all of the axes square. For the rest of the construction, lots of laser cut acrylic parts have been used, which work, but are often just not sturdy enough and might require replacing some with 3D printed parts. The good thing is that the Tivo Tarantula has a huge community which already created fixes for probably most of the issues that the printer comes with. The wiring is a huge mess and there's probably a reason why they don't show any of the cables in their promo pictures. They just haven't put any thoughts in how to properly route the wires on this machine, so you have to figure something out on your own. Now comes the biggest flaw in my opinion and this is why I can't recommend this printer to anyone who doesn't want to fiddle around with mains voltage. The PSU comes without any wires attached, so you have to connect mains wiring and also the 12 volts to your machine on your own. This is one thing that can lead to fatal accidents and there is no enclosure or protection on the power supply besides a small plastic flap that prevents you from touching the mains and electrocuting yourself. This is, in my opinion, a no-go these days. So if you're still getting one of these machines, be sure what you're doing and protect the screw terminals in some way to make it less dangerous. So everything I told you so far is totally similar to the $250 single extruder TiVo Tarantula. Then what are you getting for the additional $100 that the dual extruder model costs more? So, as the name suggests, this model has an E3D Chimera style hotend where two separate nozzles are mounted next to each other. An additional Bowden tube and feeder motor allows you to create 3D prints with either two colors or even two separate materials like soluble PVA support or even crazy combinations like nylon and PLA. The package came with three different types of feeders. Two normal ones, two so-called flex extruders and one E3D Titan clone extruder. I used the Titan extruder for the first nozzle and a normal feeder for the second one. Other than suggested, I mounted the feeder on the top of the frame which allowed me to shorten the Bowden tubes by around a third for better retraction performance and make feeding the material way easier. The printer doesn't come with any spool holders so I directly printed from my filament wall mount or out of my dry box. Since the standard electronic board the Tarantula comes with is already prepared for a second extruder, the electronics of the single and dual extruder version stay completely the same. I checked the prices for a knockoff Chimera hotend and a knockoff Titan extruder on AliExpress and you would probably be able to source the upgrade parts for around $50 or spend a little bit more and buy genuine E3D parts directly from their shop. 
This means that you are paying quite a high premium for the dual nozzle version and need to decide on your own if you want to buy the bundle or if you buy a normal tarantula and source the upgrade parts on your own. Before I get into details how I set up dual extrusion and how the prints look, another thing that I just can't get into my head. Why doesn't this printer come with a part cooling fan? Sorry, I don't get it. This thing is basically unusable for PLA and stock configuration. It would only require a cheap printed fan shroud and a fan to have a perfectly working printer, but no, there isn't any included, even in the $100 dual extrusion upgrade. Since there weren't any fan shrouds for the dual nozzle tarantula available, I used Fusion 360 to create a simple one that can be easily used for the upgraded version. Since I anyway had to upgrade the firmware due to the higher amount of steps per millimeter that are needed for the Titan extruder, I directly went for the latest version of Marlin that is currently available. Jim Brown provides a very good pre-configured version on his GitHub I can highly recommend. Totally easy to flash and this doesn't only give you the latest safety functions but also gives you features like Linear Advance 1.5 that makes fast prints look really nice and also reduces required retractions, at least on my machine, to only around 3mm. Using dual extrusion with a Chimera hotend is not the most simple thing and if you are mostly printing with a single nozzle, can even cause printing quality issues because the idle nozzle can rub over the already printed surface and leave marks on the perimeter. In order to set up, there are two things that you need to make sure. First, the nozzles need to be on the same height. Make sure that your bed is level, home the C-axis and drop the hot nozzles on the print bed by simply undoing the grub screws on the side. Make sure that the nozzles were clean before you did that and if you purchase a knockoff Chimera for another project, make sure that the screws are on the side and not on the back to even make this process possible. Tighten the screws again and you are done with this step. Next, the distance between the two nozzles need to be calibrated that the printed parts of a multi-material model perfectly match up. In your slicer, an initial offset can be set by simply measuring the distance with a ruler. In order to perform the fine tuning, a pattern with lines is printed with the two different nozzles. Each pair of the lines is an additional 50 micrometers offset. By checking which ones line up, you can adjust the nozzle offset in X and Y to get perfect print results. I started using Simplify 3D for my first dual extrusion tests, but wasn't really happy with the print results I got, because some settings were missing in my opinion. Since the Ultimaker 3 is on the market, Cura got some really awesome multi-nozzle printing features, so I tried out the version 3.2.1. There isn't a profile available for the Tivo Tarantula Dual, so I just chose another multi-nozzle printer in the list and then just changed some minor print settings. Cura has some pretty neat functions like decreasing the temperature of the hotend that is idle to reduce oozing. I tweaked the settings a little and my multicolor prints came out very nice. Even though using prime towers and an ooze shield, I didn't get totally rid of material oozing out of the unused nozzle, but all in all I was pretty impressed. Not only does dual extrusion work quite well, even the general print quality was very impressive. Only the Z bending from the wobbly single mortar Z axis bothered me a bit. The 3D Banshee looked nice and also the multicolor steamboat came out very pretty. At some point I added a piece of mirror on the print platform to get it more level, but this caused the whole print bed to shake loose overnight when I tried to print my first multicolor hairy lion. But still, the quality of the beheaded lion was very nice in the end. Taking a closer look at the bed carrier showed that the acrylic construction is just way too flimsy and even though you can get replacement beds, I'll be optimizing one for minimum weight and then use my new CNC router to make one out of aluminum. Besides multicolor prints, the Tarantula Dual also handles soluble supports very well. I have been using a Printer Pro's PVAM for a couple of models and the results looked very nice. For the soluble support settings, I just copied the ones from the Ultimaker 3 because these do work very well. Let's get to the conclusion. So unfortunately, the frame of the printer is not the most sturdy, wiring wasn't really thought through and things like a missing part cooling fan is just stupid. The PSU is horribly dangerous and you are paying quite a premium for the second nozzle. 
This is not a printer that will work nicely out of the box and will require some modifications. Still, after you've been fixing the major bugs with the help of the huge community, this printer is able to produce some really nice looking results. After calibrating the dual nozzles, I didn't have any issues printing lots of different multicolor and multi-material models. Soluble support structures really opens you up the possibility to finally print almost everything because even supported surfaces end up with a perfect finish after you remove the PVA. So should you buy this printer? I'm a little torn because the power supply should actually be a no-go criterion. But if you want to risk it and are prepared to spend some time on upgrades, then it's not a bad deal. Please share your thoughts and questions on this printer and multi-nuzzle printing in general in the comments and don't forget to leave a like. You can find the links to the model and the print profiles down in the description. If you want to buy one of these printers and support the channel, then take a look at the links also down in the description. If you want to support the channel and the creation of these videos, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and I'll see you next time.